Hello, and welcome to Clock Talk with Dr. Greg Brennan. How are you today, doctor? Uh, Jim, fantastic. As always, interesting topics to discuss. Today, we're going to talk about osteoporosis. What is it? And let's talk about it. Osteobone, porosis, holy bone, so weak bone. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, I really, I know I use this a lot, but if we use these chronic diseases, which is, we call them part of aging, I read this great book called Ageless. If we attacked aging as a disease, then we want to nip all these things before they occur, not treat them afterwards. So I think we have to go back to how is a bone formed? Um, in, inside of our inside of our body, there's there's three things called endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. Where, where little babies growing up, these are the three stem lines, and mesoderm becomes bone and muscle. And so when, when they when they develop, they become a thing called osteo uh, an osteocyte, bone cell. is what it becomes. And then they're stimulated by estrogen, and testosterone, and progesterone to grow. You have an outer bone and you have an inner bone, the outer bone, cortical bone, and trabecular bone in the middle. And bone, believe it or not, is very, very pliable, very strong, very bloody. That's where bone marrow is in. That's where our, our cells make our, our white cells, our blood cells, our platelets are in that area. It's very, very active. So what makes bone, as we're young, we, we always say you know, kids can fall down, bounce up, and they don't break things. Because again, it's pliable, but yet strong. So... When we age, we lose hormones, or do we age because we lose hormones? I don't know the answer, but that's my thought process. So if we know that estrogen, testosterone, progesterone make bone, and here's how it happens is bone, the, the, the osteocytes become a thing called osteoclast. That's the actual bone cell that makes the bone. Testosterone dominates that with progesterone. Osteo, uh, osteo, um, that's the osteoblast. Osteoclasts break it down. Control primary estrogen. And why is that important? Is we need calcium for muscle contraction, nerve talk. We need calcium, not just for bones. The bone is the, basically the bank, the savings account for this very, very important cation, this, this molecule that allows muscle to contract brain and, mus and nerves to talk. So you gotta store it. So, so every millisecond we're making bone, we're, uh, it's called reabsorption. We're taking it, we're making it and, and, and dissolving it. Making it, dissolving, making it, dissolving it. And as we're young, we're doing that. So, what happens when you stop making these hormones? You don't make as much and you have nothing to stop the reabsorption. And that's what leads to osteoporosis. We think it's a woman disease. Yeah, it's one in five, uh, one in, if I look at the numbers right, about one in five, one in five men get it, about 20% of men get it, and about two thirds of women get it. Now, when I mean get it, actual diagnosis, everybody loses bone with age, but I believe it's the hormones that do that. And this is important. The average time of life after you break a hip is only 886 days, okay? This is important stuff. So when you look at the overall death rate, when you had trauma and falling down, more women die of osteoporosis complications than, than breast cancer. So it's very important, Jim, I think, to look at it as a disease process that you may be able to nip in the bud. Now, the medications they use today, the bisphosphates, they make hard bone, but they make hard brittle bone. So it actually, after five years, has been shown to increase jaw breaking and hip breaking. That's not the benefit. The thing is, what can we do to prevent it sooner? So there are things you do when, when our body's making them naturally. Weight bearing is very important. Lift, putting stress on it, that makes the bone. Vitamin D, calcium. Not too much calcium, because too much calcium can become an alpha in our arteries. So that's how the bone works. That's what happens. So osteoporosis is not just a, a normal part of aging. I believe it's a way to nip it in the bone before it occurs. What is mu how does muscle play in the strengthening or protection of bones? It's all tensile strength. When you build muscle, you put strain. Um, you have a pole, a, um, a telephone pole, and you see the tethers on it. So when you put tethers on it, that bowl has to stay in place. So it's basically, it's, it's all physics, but it puts these cells way above my league, but it puts pressure on the cells to make more bone. Um, when you see a tree that grows with no, with no um, wind on it, very fly, very easy, very, but it's strong enough to blow over, right? Mm -hmm. When it grows in that tough wind, you know, see, you see the ones at the shore at the beach, they're gnarly, but they're strong as heck because they sustain that deep root system. They, they have a great system to, to sustain that strength. I know you're not an orthopedic, but talk to me a little bit about when you do break a bone, right? There's inflammation that I guess surrounds the, mm -hmm. the bone, red blood cells, whatever, mm -hmm. and they're basically rebuilding the bone. Is that, they mm -hmm. kind of come to the site and do 100%. that? 100%. I, I was hit by a car when I was, uh, wow. 
1968, 55 years ago in June, and broke every bone in my left leg and every bone in my right arm. But as a kid, since you have active osteoblast, osteoclavity is production, you will heal it faster, okay? But so when a bone breaks, this is important. We hear inflammation is bad, and I say it a lot, and I wanna make sure I'm clear on this. Acute inflammation is life savings. When you have injury and inflammation, your body recognizes, goes in there, inflammates, brings in the, cl the clombolent, the clotlets, the clot, the clot, the platelets, the fibrin, the interleukins also come in there, and then they put like a, a, a knot in there, and then they break up and dissolve over time. That's a acute one. The problem is you have this chronic inflammation. That's a problem. Uh, we talked about that before one of our one of our talks on, on Alzheimer's disease. Uh, that chronic inflammation is a disaster, uh, but the acute inflammation is life saving. So regarding testosterone, then obviously most of us know testosterone is a nice a treatment that can help build muscle mass, and obviously there's a lot of other benefits right. to it as well. So a little bit more detail. Walk us through how that helps the bone. Okay, again, so. The, the osteocyte must convert into become, the bone cell must convert to become a maker of bone, the osteoblast, or the breaker down of bone. And the one that becomes the maker of bone is controlled primarily, primarily by testosterone. Estrogen progesterone as well. Let me give you some examples. A woman in her reproductive time is making estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, so she's making bone. And then when menopause happens, a woman loses 5% of bone per year, per year. By age of 70, 70% 70 of women will have a compressed vertebrae. And we talked before, it's a leading cause of death. Over 60, worldwide, number one cause of death is head trauma by falling down, hitting your head, right? So if you're, most people don't fall down and break their hip, they snap their hip and fall down. Then they die of pneumonia complications of that. There's a great study from 1979 in American Journal of OBGYN that shows giving bioidentical pellets of estrogen testosterone. Remember, we lose 5% per year. They compared creams, shot, uh, creams, uh, oral, and, um, and shots. A bioidentical pellet increases bone production, the healthy bone, which is both trabecula and tubercula, cortical and trabecula, 8.3% per year. So it eliminates osteoporosis. Um, I've had multiple patients over the, over the thousand we've taken that they've had bone scans before they start. Years later, they're older and have more bone than they were younger. And again, because our body knows what to do. Our body's cells don't know their age. Our chronological age doesn't change, but our biological change can be slowed down, in some cases reversed with, with bioidentical hormones. So prior to, let's say, 1990, uh, you had females going through menopause, you know, in the 1800s, early 1900s, and what have you. Were they having osteoporosis issues back then, we were, like they are now? Yes and no. They were there no matter what. When menopause starts, stops, regardless of what generation, last 6,000 years, they lose bone. We don't data, but we know that from where we do go back. But Jim, they were living less, they were living not as long. Number one cause of death as we aged back then, 100 years ago, believe it or not, was trauma and dirty water. So we didn't live that that life locks, but nobody nobody would go out without nobody would go out without their life without osteoporosis. Even men too. I mean, when I say osteoporosis, that's the extreme disease. Osteopenia is low bone formation. Some of you guys may have heard of rickets. Rickets is osteomalacia, a weak bone, and that Jim is from low vitamin D. Vitamin D is crucially important to place it. Vitamin D, by strict definition, is not a vitamin. It was the fourth one recognized, so they called it A, B, C, and D. But it's not a vitamin. It's actually an anabolic secretoroid, exactly like um, testosterone. In fact, the backbone structure of vitamin D is those four rings, exactly like cholesterol and testosterone and estrogen. So they all wait, interplay the calcium, the hormones, the phosphorus, the boron, all those are minerals that make the bone strong. But the key... The key thing actually turns on the initiation are the, are the sex hormones. That's why girls grow taller than women early, or the boys earlier, because they're 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 play, they have a rapid growth when their cycles start. We go a little slower at that time. But it's important, Jim. You brought up muscle before. Sarcopenia is when muscles waste away, and that actually takes you know affects the bones as well. So you don't have that muscle there to support the bone. Sarcopenia is also a disease, Jim. You need you need protein for that. You need whey protein for that. You need animal protein for that. Vegans do not make it. <laughs> they do not make that. And you could increase that again naturally with testosterone. There's a great paper I read showing again exercise three times a week over time 
over the age of 40, this study was on, uh, decreases overall mortality 300%. There's great medicine is, I mean, workout's fantastic. But they, the studies show that men who work out three days a week lose one to 2% of their strength every year. That's because the hormones are going down. Keep your testosterone, you can actually gain strength as you age. Again, the cells don't know their chronological age. The um, synthetic versus BHRT in this situation, is there same benefit? Some response, some yes, some no. Because um, there are, you need the estradiol is the most potent one. And you have something called SERMs, uh, which uh, stimulate estrogen receptor modules that may have some benefit just for bone. Uh, there are some of those, um, but they don't have the other benefits of the heart and the brain. So there are specific SERMs, that, so they're synthetic, the synthetic type, they work like they modulate them like them, but they only do specific parts. But again, they don't make the bone as naturally strong as the extra dial does with the testosterone estrogen. The key, Jim, the key truly is the testosterone working with the estrogen and progesterone together. So is there certain people more at risk than others besides lack of hormones? Yeah. Different cultures? Cultures. Southeast Asian. Um, it has to do with sunlight, vitamin D, protein, but that seems to be a culture there. Uh, Caucasians, um, African-Americans have less. I'm not exactly sure. It may have to do with melanin and vitamin D might be part of that, um, but that, that's, that's overall. But women in general, when you look, we're talking, we're splitting hairs, but Southeast Asia is the highest and then uh, uh, African Americans are the last, least. But again, think about that. 20% of men have osteoporosis, 20% of men. And the older you are, when you break a hip, mortality is sooner, okay? Over the age of 65, again, as I told you, it's 886 days if you break hip uh, average time before passing away. Has the uh, male percentage increased in the last 30 or 40 years, like we've seen everything else increase? It or? appears to be, but we're just starting that curve, right? So I'm not that old yet, but yes. <laughs> but yeah, we're seeing some of the data on that. But again, back to the stuff though, Jim. Um, in prostate cancer, again, the standard treatment of uh, androgen, testosterone, deprivation therapy, those patients increase osteoporosis, increase dementia, increase cardiovascular disease, because we know at the biochemical level, the sex hormones are the protectants of these hormones, uh, of these cell types. So it's just common sense in my mind, Jim, is when your body, I'll use women again. So women have menopausal symptoms. The treatment of choice in America is SSRIs. It's like, no, no, they didn't lose a Prozac or a Zoloft. They didn't lose those. They lost their estrogen, their testosterone, and progesterone. So those, those cells know exactly how to respond to those structures at those levels. So that's what we've been doing here for years now, 12 years here now watching. And I have multiple cases, again, of, of women who got bone scans under our treatment years later, see the reversing of that. Let's talk a little bit about calcium um, because that seemed to be like a common treatment of choice, calcium supplements uh, to protect your bone and what have you. You had mentioned earlier that too much of it can create some cardio issues. So let's just walk us through that a little Especially bit. Especially in older people, because calcium, if it's not in a bone or doing its function, it gets stored in the infill lining of arteries, atherosclerosis, that leads to more inflammation. It binds to those free, again, free radicals are these things that are negatively charged, calcium is positively charged. So when they meet, that blocks that off. So the thing is though, without the estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, your calcium is nowhere to go. Studies have shown taking calcium by itself in a menopausal woman does not do anything for bone because it cannot be placed into the bone. So you gotta be very, very comfortable with, careful with that. About 600 milligrams a day is, is a proper one. But again, you get that a wonderful diet, especially I'm a huge believer in grass-fed, healthy red meat, um, healthy fats in that aspect of that. Um, I, I, for those who, those Sean Baker, he's been on our podcast before, please watch, read his book, Carnivore Diet. It's phenomenal. So taking a big giant glass of milk a day is not really gonna help you. No, no, <laughs> no. Eating the cow that makes the milk is a whole lot better. Sounds good. Um, Pieces of advice for 60 plus year olds that are, you mentioned working out three times a week. Um, what kind of workout? Just light weight lifting? Yeah, but, but, wait, but like 20, 30 minutes, I'm gonna be a CrossFit. That's great, nothing wrong with that. But it's, it's lifting heavy things and walking. Lifting heavy things and walking. That is crucial for overall. Again, number four cause of death, Adam all up, is falling down. Let's get that neuromuscular structure as strong as possible. 
Well, get your testosterone checked. Stay healthy. Thank you, Dr. Brenner. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.